Things got locked up, and it may not let you out. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Thursday. Welcome to Debate Amongst Friends. Today, we're going to talk about MLB not having a season. Thursday night football preview and NFL quarterback index. But... I am the Professor John Gotti, King of RNG, Troll Master Data, and Liza Ninja, the Conqueror. Conqueror. Nothing! <laughs> Not everything. I am the Jack of all trades and the Master of none. But I am the wise man for your reigning, defending, undisputed podcasting heavyweight champion of the world, the head of the table, the Ooh, we can't do that. Baseball's not happening. The Sultan of Squat. Los Tranquilo himself, Doc. El Idolo. Doc, how are you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good, man. I can't even complain. I um, was curious. Didn't even know we had a CBA issue. Yes. With the MLB. Um, it just kind of popped up. And, you know, obviously it, the media automatically goes directly into lockout mode of course um uh, as far as what though, i was able to read and this is for those that don't understand so the current cba expired at the end of this past season mm -hmm. but um it didn't meant because as you saw throughout the past week or so uh a lot of players were getting new contracts so yeah. the aim is they want to have the 2021-2022 baseball season from happening. But they have not yet come to terms with the Major League Baseball Players Association. Mm -hmm. So what I'm getting from all this is they're going to still launch the season, but they're going to do more negotiations until they could come to terms during the season if they can't do it for the rest of this offseason. So that's what and I I'm, got from it. I'm not getting that. Um, I'm getting that they're going to halt everything until they figure this out. So right now, as you mentioned, those free agent signings, $2 billion in deals so far uh, once mm -hmm. free agency started. Um, and they were supposed to have these meetings and so on and so forth. But right now, this says player transactions are halted and clubs are now restricted from contacting players in the offseason until the lockout is list lifted, as well as the MLB winter meetings that were scheduled for next week have yes. been canceled. So my, I'm thinking from this that they are not doing anything until they get a deal. In place it's, a, now. it's a minor freeze for now. So right now, they, they don't want to show things are being committed. After the CBA expired, which is pretty smart. Like, you don't want to say, hey, you're going to make, you know, $2 million next year. It's the baseball player. You know, here's the contract. And then we don't have it. Well, now that contract's kind of janked and it becomes more of a legal issue at that point. But yes, I get what you're saying. But I think this is more of a minor freeze. Um, they still have to do the winter meetings. It's not like it's the first time this has happened. Of course, the last time we did have a lockout was in the 90s. I believe 94, 95. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, it could happen, but baseball players have been making more money. I think this is more about probably like, you know, how things are getting spread around. Kind of like what happened with the NFL it season. It is. Yeah, it is. and it is that. I, well, so one of the things that I see here is that the um, player association, the union, wants to kind of change I guess, or spark a change in free agency and the structure of how younger players are paid. Yes. Because um, I guess it does take a little longer for the younger players to get paid. That's why we see those, you know, astronomical contracts, you know, when their, I guess, initial contracts are over. Uh, so they want to 
bump up the minimum salary, which right now is just 570000 I say only, but, you know, when you see some people out there getting, you I know. Mean, I mean, Professor John Guy would be very, very happy if he gets a contract oh, of $500,000. Of course. <laughs> of course. Of <laughs> course. Um, but I mean, there's a lot of a lot, a lot of salary and tax implications that I think are going in. I think some people want to raise the number of teams, and we kind of talked about this with other leagues. Yeah. The number of teams in the playoffs, um, they would like it to go from ten to fourteen, which would be interesting. Um, and then I think that salary cap floor, like you know, some people have to spend a certain amount of money uh, to actually you know not be penalized and that's across all sports i think every sport has to spend a, a certain amount of money if i'm not mistaken yes um before they're i i guess penalized by their respective leagues um, but yeah it seems like it's just a lot of money taxing and just some minor things which i mean i think you know you compromise on one or two things and then maybe a hard cap like honestly raising the playoffs from 10 to 14 teams you should just throw that in there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Increase. I mean, and I would say that, you know, they did a great job with at least the playing games to at least begin right. that process. Of right. course, the NBA did that last season, which, mm-hmm. you know, how do you want to feel about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the NFL kind of changed the way that they did their play, playoff format. Like, we're starting to add more modernization. We're just, we're just waiting on – we're just waiting on one, and that's the NCAA, and then we'll be we'll be in business. Oh boy. <laughs> we'll be in business, but yeah, I think you increase that number of uh, playoff teams um, and, in the and and, and in, by the way, that's that's me knowing both a Bama fan and a Fighting Irish fan <laughs> who was uh, yeah, discussing about yeah. this today. So oh no, I get it. Um, yeah, if I'm if I'm them, I'm saying to myself, hey, we can increase, we can bump the minimum salaries up. From yeah. 570 to let's just say 700 you know or 750 um then we go ahead and and increase that from 10 to 14 uh, and then you can kind of discuss some of the other things and come to come to some compromises but we'll have to wait and see what happens i think the nfl yeah. did a great job with their cba um you know more uh, health insurance bumping up the pay more incentives for people who outgrow their uh draft status mm-hmm. um i mean they did a really good job so i think baseball get it done i agree it is a hold for a freeze for right now yeah um i don't think they're gonna have that meeting next week <laughs> i don't think it's we'll gonna see. happen that fast. we'll see anything can yeah happen. It, it could um but if they do that if they listen to the show which i know they are and they say hey you know what that leaves in the podcast and beats he's right let's just bump this minimum salary up and throw I these games literally in here. say that every week <laughs> we'll see um, but let's jump over to the gridiron. Uh, before, well, right before we do that, I just want to give another quick shout out. I did it yesterday, but just another quick shout out to those Houston Rockets for winning again. Four in a row now, although they lost uh, Kevin Porter Jr. and Christian Wood to injury last night. Uh, Jay Sean Tate was able to get a career high in points, 32, I believe it was. Uh, wow, how the tables have turned and no longer just countdown to lift off they're actually somewhat soaring for the first time this year so wow. we'll see what happens wow. but wow. now let's get over to the gridiron where we got them boys we got the cowboys we got the saints they're in new orleans mike mccarthy is unavailable cowboys okay. i'm still picking yeah. the cowboys oh really yeah i'm still picking the cowboys Taysom Hill's getting the start. I'm still picking the Cowboys. Alvin Kamara's not come, not playing. I'm still picking the Cowboys. I can agree with that. I okay. Go with the okay. I'm <laughs> like, I feel like let's <laughs> let's not sit here and <laughs> let's not sit here and insult our listeners' intelligence. Okay. I'm, we're picking the Cowboys. Now it could completely turn into a Thursday night game. Oh, oh, without question. And we know this. Yeah. But. Talent versus talent, I have to go with the Cowboys. Yeah, I can agree with that. Um, and it looks like Amari Cooper and CeeDee Lamb will both be playing, um, as well as Demarcus Lawrence will be back, mm-hmm. making you know his return from the broken foot. Um, 
Randy Gregory is is working his way back in. That made Michael Parsons can kind of move back to where he was playing, which is playing amazing. Without Alvin Kamara, obviously they'll be turning the ball to Mark Ingram. I mean, I'm pretty sure he's like, oh, you know, I could have stayed in Houston, but you know, I said let me go back to New Orleans. I got a shot, and that shot's kind of floating in the wind. Yikes! Yikes! But um. <laughs> Let's jump over and, to the And we'll Q. definitely see more of uh, Tony Pollard, too. Whether or not yeah. they decide to start Zeke or not, they, they said he's still questionable. That sounds like, you know, politic right there. Like, oh, he's questionable. We know Tony Pollard's playing better than Zeke. And it's okay. Um, it's okay. Um, but let's jump over to the QB index, man, and see what's going on. We have some moving and shaking here. Uh, number one, where is it? Where is it? Oh my God, this is the first time all year that in this little description mm-hmm. of number one Tom Brady, there's no mention of his age. This they can the only go so time. far with the age stuff, though. <laughs> Tom Brady is number one. Um, again, he made some good throws. Um, didn't didn't look like he had any hiccups. I mean, obviously, this is all about Leonard Fournette, uh, which if we look at the running back index, I expect him to be top five. I want to see him up there. But he well, had... He really, there. he really said that, folks. Oh, yeah, I did it. He had four tutties, and um, he was able to go ahead and, and finish off the Indianapolis Colts. But Tom Brady, 11 games, 3,400 yards, 30 touchdowns, nine interceptions, three fumbles. Uh, still having a great season, uh, 67.6% completions. Um, really, really good. Um, and just as good, you know, we have Aaron Rodgers playing at number two here. 11 games, 2,800 yards, almost 2,900 yards, 23 touchdowns, four interceptions, uh, 66.2%. Um, really um, manhandled, in my opinion, the, the Rams. I hate this first line here. Like everyone on this list, Rogers has put up a few. Again, stickers. they keep doing this, and I, I'm <laughs> been telling you this. Now you're believing. <laughs> hey, listen. You can believe just, now. Now you're a believer. I'm just here, so I don't get fined, right? I gotta yes. make sure I put the show up so I don't get the dollar. Um, but to me, Aaron Rodgers did a great job. Um, you know, leading the pack uh, without some key linemen. Um, with out some key pieces period um but they've been doing a good job uh he's been leading them you know just like number three here they've been without him <laughs> i mean the fact that he's still number three right uh is amazing that's amazing <laughs> uh, but this but you know what this one isn't the one that that gets me it's not this one this isn't the one that gets me um but we're gonna get to the one that that again really puts me in a way and it's like oh, I don't I'm not 100% sure about that. It's not Dak. Dak deserved to drop two slots. Yep. Uh to number 4. Uh he had uh, an okay game against the Raiders. I know it was good. I mean it just there was some missed throws of course out there and I think tonight he'll get back on track. I think so as well. Uh, have a big game. Number 5 Derek Carr obviously he has some great throws against them boys. Um, would I put him above Dak? Probably not. He did come yeah. up, you know, from seven to five. Um, in year eight, 3,400 yards, you know, 17 touchdowns, still bringing those interceptions down. But you know how interceptions are. They're either hit or miss. Yep. And here we are once again. Lamar Jackson at number six, not rated previously because of the injury. Um, no, I, the illness. It was the illness. The illness. Illness, illness. Uh, I am not agreeing with this ranking. It just wasn't a good game. I mean, like, I, I agree, but like we, we're at a point now where they're going to keep trying to keep him in the top 10 of this list. It's so weird. How do um, you throw it, four picks in a game? and be the number six ranked quarterback? I don't know. How do you do that? I don't 
don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, but number seven here, we got Justin Herbert. Um, also, you know, I think he took a dive. I mean, he dropped three slots. I would have to see who the, who's underneath him, but I mean, it it just didn't look good. Um, the team as a whole didn't look good. Yes, <laughs> I'll say the whole team as a whole didn't look good. Yeah, uh, they have Kirk Cousins at number eight, uh, Minnesota Vikings. He's been having a great season. Um, San Francisco just. Again, as we mentioned yesterday, it just you just don't know what you're going to get out of them. Obviously, they lost Dalvin, Dalvin Cook. The mm-hmm. Vikings did. And Kirk just, I mean, the team. I can't even blame it on Kirk. I think he deserves no, to be in the top this, 10. No, it's the team. Uh, but he drops three slots. And that's where it gets kind of tricky, where Lamar is at number six. I'm just not believing that he would have. Been, he would have fared better than Lamar Kirk has Cousins. 20 turnovers, <laughs> whereas <laughs> Kirk Cousins only has nine. <laughs> and we're moving on to number nine here. <laughs> uh, 3,200 yards, 25 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, six fumbles. Um, yep. Luckily, this is just one of those bye week kind of things. Um, We'll see. I don't know how you drop him and then, you know, leave other people where they are. Like, it's it's kind of crazy to me. But, hey, we'll see what they do against the Broncos, right? It's ridiculous, by the way, about the Lamar Jackson thing. Number 10, I mean, what, he only threw one pick? No, he threw two picks on Thanksgiving. He did. But outside of that, he was was pretty much flawless. He got the the W. Um, Yeah. I mean, I think this is one of those situations where they're probably still penalizing him from that Colts game. Yep. Because um, I don't think – He's getting that Aaron Rodgers treatment. I think Lamar throws this all off, honestly, if we're being honest. Lamar throws this off. I mean, but you can't just put Lamar, I guess, at 15 where he, he should have belonged. No. I would, <laughs> but, I would make the arc for him at least being number 10, if not 11. Make sure. Makes sense. And number 11, Matthew Stafford falling out of the top 10 for the first time. Um, at number 11, five slots, but it was a really, really bad loss to the Packers. Yep. Uh, Joe Burrow out of well, the top. Well, it wasn't a, lo- a bad loss. Like, he still had. Well, for like- him, uh, he, yeah, he, I thought it was just okay. He looked, he looked pre- pretty pedestrian out there to me. Okay. Then, yes, I can agree with that. But let's he looked pretty really rough. I mean, he didn't look like, like he didn't look like the guy that torched the Bucks. I can tell you that much. Yikes. He went there. Uh, but here we go. We got number. Number 12, we have Joe Burrow dropping to number 12 out of the top 10. Yep. Um, even though he had a pretty solid game against the he Steelers. He um, pretty solid. He had a great game. How could he drop two, how could he drop two slots? Even Mac Jones dropped two it's, slots. It's, it's, it's all about getting Lamar over. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Mac Jones dropped two slots. Doesn't make any sense to me either. Nope. Uh, but. Uh, in the words of Morpheus, now do you leave? <laughs> uh, but we should have a pretty good game tonight. Uh, them boys going to the Saints. Um, hopefully, this pushes the Bucks a little further up the NFC South races. We play mm-hmm. them Falcons this week. But, I mean, we got lockout. We got Thursday night. And we had QB index. Yes, and, little, and little, really little, quickly though, let's discuss the current playoff picture. Playoff picture. Playoff. In the AFC. And of course, it's seven for each conference, ladies and gentlemen, for this year. So the seven, for some reason, still on top of the AFC is <laughs> <laughs> the Ravens <laughs> at number one. Number I mean, they're eight have- three. Number two, we have the Patriots. I'm going to dignify that with a response. Wow. Number three, we have the Titans. Number four, we have the Chiefs. Number five, we have the Bengals, which, of course, these are the wild cards, these last three. Number six, mm-hmm. we got the Bills. And number seven, we have the Chargers. So it's going to be an interesting and fun AFC. It's still pretty open. Um, the Ravens won the games that they needed to win, um, despite what we think. I mean, they're eight and three. If you would tell me that their eight and three looks as good as you know, like the Bucks eight and three or the yeah. Patriots eight and four, I would say no. But uh, even the Titans eight and four, 
but it, they're eight and three. Yeah. <laughs> and in the NFC, of course, we have three teams from Murder's Row, a.k.a. the NFC West, because the NFC West is going to NFC West. And on right. top of the NFC, we have the Arizona Cardinals still clinging on to that lead, but the Packers are not that far behind at 9-3 and three at number 2. At number 3, we got Doc's Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Number 4, we got the Dallas Cowboys. And the wild card as of right now. As of right now. The Los Angeles Rams at number five. Number six, we have the San Francisco 49ers. And rounding up the top seven of the NFC. The old screens. The Washington the football old, team at number six. The old skins. The old We're going to have to talk to hell and find out that that needs to be a tech or not. But we'll, we'll figure yeah. it out. Um, but, yeah, I think this is going to be good. Um, the, obviously, if the Cardinals happen to lose, the Packers will jump up to number one mm-hmm. and so on and so forth because I believe the, you know, obviously that that uh, match, that head-to-head, uh, the yep. Bucks still have an opportunity to jump up with wins, of course. But, obviously, we might get clapped by the Falcons, but we'll talk about that tomorrow. You want to make another uh, deal about that? I don't know. We talked about this before. <laughs> Matt well, Ryan. Well, I'll, I'll think of something good. Okay, I'll think about uh, accepting it or not. But Johnny, I know the people heard this podcast on their favorite podcast platform. But if they didn't, they can always go to our website at www.debateamongstfriends.com to listen to this episode as well as all the previous. Be sure to tune in tomorrow as we go over this Thursday night game as well as give our weekend prediction. But you come back here for the news, the analysis, and the reads.